Right now it is time for Real News, a time where we get together with Brian Ross and we take a look at uh, stories that are uh, going on and bubbling about us. Good morning, Brian. Good morning to you. A lot going on on this uh, Thursday. Last, yeah. I guess it's the first day of July. Yeah, you know, and, you know, when this whole, uh, this whole collapse of the building uh, first started, uh, I thought to myself, uh, this is where uh, your background uh, investigating is going to come in. I mean, we're finding out just a whole bunch of horrid facts uh, of things that were known and were not known and were, were given around. And it appears uh, that there's going to be some criminal liability sooner or later some, somewhere with somebody. Without a doubt. This building was built in 1981, 40 years ago. It was a time when the building code and the building code enforcement in uh, Dade County, which is where this is, uh, was extremely weak. In fact, uh, in 1991, when they, the, uh, 19, uh, the Hurricane Andrew came through, I was a reporter at NBC uh, covering the aftermath of that. And it was revealed then a huge scandal about the failure of the people to enforce building codes. And homes that could have withstood the storm did not because they were built so shoddily. So you have to wonder if that same thing applies here. Uh, plus, uh, we're taking a close look at some of the videos coming out now. We see leaking and uh, the extensive, you know, it's not that far from the water. And the water table there has risen, thanks to global warming, about four inches in the last uh, decade or so. So a lot of issues there, but I have a strong focus, and I would on the corruption and perhaps allowed a uh, second-rate building to go up there. Uh, just a, just a, a story that I know it sounds obnoxious when you say it, but you, you don't think of something like this uh, uh, without, a, you know, no earthquake, no nothing like that, uh, a 12-story building collapsing. Uh, uh, you just That's just something you don't hear about normally. If there's a fire or an earthquake, that's different. So this uh, this is going to be a story to follow up over the course of the next year. But Oh, my, it's just horrible, yeah. yes. Uh, but uh, the other story, which I, I want to, which I want to go to, is what's happening today, uh, where once again the, the chief executive officer of the Trump organization is going to surrender uh, to authorities uh, with a, a criminal indictment uh, on hand about him. Uh, it's right now the indictment is just on on that person and the Trump organization. But this is once again a place where the presidency has never been. Where after a president is out of office, uh, uh, the business that bears his name is is now coming under incredible scrutiny. His name is Alan Weisselberg. He's the chief financial officer, the CFO. Uh, he may have already uh, turned himself into authority earlier this morning. He'll be in court today. I think one thing to look at is that the the early information about the nature of the charges is coming primarily from the lawyers for the Trump Organization and from Mr. Weisselberg. They have spun it to suggest. These are very minor charges, failure to pay taxes on perks that employees were given, uh, cars, apartments, school tuition, apparently, which, of course, is no small matter in New York City. Nevertheless, those are the kind of uh, tax issues that rarely, rarely result in a prosecution. So if that's all they have, it will be underwhelming, to say the least. And uh, already Mr. Trump is uh, said to be emboldened by this. And if it's a charge just on failure to pay taxes on uh, the cars they gave him, uh, and they should have paid taxes, they usually that's resolved in a civil way with huge penalties and fines. Very rarely does anybody go to prison. And, of course, the whole point of this is to get Weisselberg to decide to testify about Donald Trump. Without his testimony, without his insight, it's very likely that the district attorney's office could ever bring a charge against Trump. So this is a pivotal, pivotal day in the investigation. All right, and then uh, the big shocker yesterday uh, about uh, Bill Cosby's sentence being vacated yeah. due to a, a technicality. Absolutely. Well, a technicality, yes. Um, he was told he wasn't going to be prosecuted, so he agreed uh, or was forced essentially to testify in a civil suit brought by the same woman uh, for whom he was convicted of uh, raping, essentially. And uh, the court held that because uh, he was told he wasn't going to be prosecuted, and because, therefore, they had induced him to waive his uh, Fifth Amendment rights, rights against uh, self-incrimination, uh, that they couldn't bring this case, and the only remedy was to uh, end it and release him. He's out. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any kind of an appeal. 
Uh, in some ways, there's a justice. Uh, we don't want the government to force citizens to testify against themselves, is what's happened here, and then turn around and use the information. On the other hand, uh, what we know about Cosby is that he was really an awful man. Uh, he still stands as an awful man. Nothing anybody said about him was proven to be incorrect. It's just, as you say, it's a kind of legal technicality, but it's a, it's a part of the justice system that you know, is important to be upheld, regrettably. It's a choice there of uh, the Iwana system where people are, citizens are kind of conned into uh, testifying, and then uh, that's used against them. It's, it is almost uh, as blatant a mistake uh, as uh, what happened in the cross in the uh, in the uh, in the trial uh, of the murders in Los Angeles uh, with, uh, uh, with the murder of a Buffalo Bill star uh, O.J. Simpson, where the pros- right. where, where the prosecution didn't investigate the 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 officers and and, and that led to a, an unwise decision there as well, but a, a legal decision so. Uh, the bad thing about this decision is that even though it was vacated on a techni- uh, on a technical aspect, it it it, it emboldens uh, it emboldens uh, oh, yeah. un- un- unfortunately the the actions that that are taken against women. It really does. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a pretty dark it's a pretty dark day for that. Uh, it really is, and so disappointing for the uh, women who testified and came forward, and so many of them did. And there's a long, long. A uh, list of women who have uh, claimed, apparently, totally correctly, that he used a kind of drug on them and took advantage of them. Uh, he did serve almost three years in prison, uh, but he's out, and uh, you have to decide now uh, whether you know what was important. The rule of law is important; yeah. uh, it's probably more important than any one man's conviction. But it stinks, that's for sure. And you you wonder why the prosecution went ahead using that kind of information knowing this could be the issue. And uh, and like you say, it's not going to change the fact everybody knows who Bill Cosby is now and, and and what he is and what he has done. So that's not going to change the personal uh look the way people look at him. But still it's a, it's a black eye uh it's it's a black eye. Now I, today is I I think it's the final day where the Supreme Court makes decisions, is it not? Yes, it is. Some big rulings coming uh, at ten o'clock this morning. There'll be a lot to talk about next week. But yeah, yeah. Some, some big rulings. This is the end of the term, uh, and uh, one of the questions that will be asked, in addition to the rulings, is uh, what's going to happen to the uh, elderly member of the court, Stephen Breyer? Will he step down while there is still a uh, Democratic majority in the Senate? And uh, there's a couple of the one that I'm interested in is uh, dark money. Uh, once again, uh, conservative nonprofits uh, uh, and uh, the Thomas More Law Center uh, is going after the uh, rule that requires charitable organizations to solicit donations and disclose the contributors to the state attorney general. Uh, we've already gone down the slippery slope once, and I hope we don't go down it further. I couldn't agree more, but you know the. Uh, they found that so much the the money area is uh, extension of the First Amendment, and as we saw last week in the ruling about uh, the cheerleader, the high school girl, that you know, the, this court has taken a very broad view, uh, and, and as a First Amendment absolutist, which I am as a reporter, uh, I, I salute that. But that you know they have seen uh, using money in politics as extension of the First Amendment of free speech, and so they've been very lenient there. I gave us the Citizens United uh, ruling. Now, the rulings that people think are not really great for politics, but uh, that's been the reasoning. All right, and one final thing. Uh, China is uh, really now uh, pushing very aggressively on the world stage uh, uh, with some of the comments yeah. that came out from uh, their 100th anniversary. Yep, yep. It, it, <laughs> it is absolutely the case. Uh, are they going to uh, you know, reunite with Taiwan? That seems to be the issue. That is... As we discussed uh, last week and the week before, that is a real flashpoint. That really is, and um, you know, hard hard to know what's what's going to happen there. Uh, it's scary, and it, you know, it it's, it used to be that China was seen mostly as a, a economic adversary. Uh, they are really uh, showing their uh, using their muscles, flexing their muscles with their. They've got a strong fleet there. We are at a distance there. What would happen if they actually had tried to invade uh, Taiwan, this island off the uh, China, which they say is theirs, and we see it as an independent country or an independent place? 
All right. Well, we can end on some good news, and that's the Sharon Playhouse opening this weekend. <laughs> with the, with the, yes. It's, and I and, uh, also want to point out uh, Friday is the uh, big cake sale historical society. Um, yours truly will be one of the auctioneers starting around 435 in the afternoon, uh, weather permitting, out on the uh, outside of the historical society. We've got 16 cakes made by some of the great bakers of uh, Sharon, Connecticut. That'll be auctioned off, uh, all for a good cause. So we'll see what happens there. But I'm looking forward to it a lot, and uh, I plan to buy at least one or two. Let them eat cake. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly right. (laughs) All right, Brian, have a great weekend, and happy 4th of July. Take care. Take care. Uh, Brian Ross uh, and Real News here on Robin Hood Radio.